there, everybody. This is Graham, also known as the Collector 75. Welcome to another Transformers review. For this one, this is um, a video that I've actually wanted to do uh, since Christmas, since I actually got them. This is, of course, the Generation 2 coloured Fall of Cybertron Bruticus. Uh, now, it's pretty obvious I was always going to get the, the Generation 2 coloured version. A uh, couple of reasons, really. One, I loved Generation 2, so it was just a natural, really. And the second was it was probably the cheaper cheaper set of, out of all the three current versions of it. There is the San Diego con, Comic Con where it's the... Um, I think it's the actual game coloured versions, which are the more G1-inspired coloured scheme and then you've got the one out in the shops which the colors don't really match the game or any other version of them really which is a bit strange um and then there's this one this one which i was a bit surprised actually i didn't know it was going to come in a, in a gift set in a generation two gift set i can't get the whole lot but i'll take a picture and put it on the back um it's got some great let me see there we go it's got some great sort of artwork of bruticus there um and um, it's very Generation 2 inspired. It's got the tech spec and everything. Um, I just think it's actually brilliant. I think it's a brilliant set. And to be honest, I thought it was well underpriced. I got mine as a pre-order from Big Bad Toy Store. And we've I had to pay a little bit of import tax, unfortunately. Um, but I think it came in at about 60 odd, 70 quid. Which isn't too bad, because I've seen it on eBay for about the same sort of price. So, you know, uh, what can you do? Um, it does come with five instruction booklets and... I do like it because they did at least put Generation 2 on the instruction books as well. They didn't have to. I was assuming they would just come with the usual Fall of Cybertron um, instruction booklet. So I didn't think they would go to all the trouble of redoing an instruction booklet. Um, also, uh, 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 not so much on this one. But if you look in the instructions, if you ever buy them, uh, it does have, especially for Vortex, it does have him with a different head, which is obviously for the next release, which I believe is going to be the Wreckers. Uh, it does have him with um, a Whirl-type head, so obviously he's going to be Whirl out of the Wreckers. Um, couldn't see a difference for Blast-Off, but I haven't checked the others yet. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what sort of characters they will be out of the Wreckers. Uh, I could imagine he'd probably be Robuster. Can't think who he would be, and nor him, nor him really. Um, maybe Top Spin, or Twin Twist, maybe. Um, who knows? Maybe Impactor, or maybe uh, who knows? Anyway, uh, that's uh, a, a subject for another time, really. Let's get on to the toys. Um, as you can see, they're all Generation 2 inspired colour schemes, and for me, that was absolutely brilliant because um, I loved the Generation 2 colour schemes. I thought they were bright, garish, and came in this weird camo. Um, bright camo that was absolutely pointless, but just brilliant. I loved it. Uh, right, so we're going to start here with Brawl. Uh, as you can see, this is Brawl in his alt mode, and it's a hover tank. And to be honest, it's a strange looking hover tank, but it's pretty good. It has the moving turret, which is pretty cool. And it does have a third gun in there, which obviously doubles up as his handgun. Um, you could have done with some paint apps right at the back there, like as some sort of red, like obviously engines or thrusters or whatever. Um, it does have the Generation 2 emblem on there, albeit a black one. I was going to um, put a Repro Label G2 logo on there, but in the end I decided not to. Uh, right, so let's transform this into robot mode, because there isn't much that much more to say about the alt mode, really. Um, it's got a fairly intricate, well not intricate, it's 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 more more complicated than it actually needs to be, if I'm honest with you. We lift this back out of the back there. We can separate the gun, sort of lifts up. For some reason it tells you to move the gun barrels that way, sort of like 45 degrees inwards. Uh, I'm not really too sure why for this mode. But anyway, we lift that up, separate just these bits off the front. These are going to be the robot arms, and then we can just get the robot legs straight out find that helps um, and then rotate this little black connector which will obviously connect them up for when they combine into Bruticus just rotate that all the way around to the back come around to the front and then we just straighten up legs fold his little toes out if you can get them out uh, and then we're gonna separate also you know, I forgot to do this you've got to separate that little bit of the arm on there and there Come back round here and then rotate that all the way down. And there we come with his arms. Fold out his little hands. Rotate that all the way down. Get that little hand out. Uh, and then we've got to push 
this bit up and then there is a way of getting this poxy head out. I cannot remember now how you bloody do it, but there is a way of doing it. Um, I think we've got to come ready to do it. There is a way of doing it. It just is absolute pain in the ass if you ask, mate. There we go. I usually sometimes stick the gum just in there and push the bugger up. There we go. And that gets it into position. Uh, put the gun back against his back like that. Just straighten out the legs. And there we have Brawl in robot mode. And to be honest, it's a bit of a letdown, if you ask me. Um, main reason is the, the feet don't really... It's, it's quite back heavy, but these toes are a little bit flimsy, if you ask me. So you have to have him sort of leaning forward to get him to stand up. Um, it's just a shame. It is a shame because it could have been such a good robot mode. And he's got good articulation all round, if you know what I mean. You're right, rotates at the shoulders and the elbows and ball joints. Um, so you can put in some, some cool poses like holding his gun up. If you can get your fingers in there to turn his head, give him a cool looking sort of pose. You know, he, he's not too bad, if I'm honest. It is just a shame about the feet and the legs, really. Um, it is kind of hollow, like you will find on toys these days. Um, they are deluxe figures, but they are probably... They're good-sized deluxe figures. They're a little bit smaller than probably you'd normally find. But, saying that, yeah, they're not too bad. I'm just going to stand him up at the back there. So that's Brawl. And we're going to move on next to uh, probably one of my favourite ones. This is uh, Swindle. And obviously, um, this one could do with some paint apps. Uh, one thing about the back of the box is it does show them all with extra paint applications, and I have tried to put more on. This is why it's taken me a little while to do this video, as I've been painting them up for the last week or two. Uh, but more on that in a moment. Um, so this is obviously Swindle. He's um, He was a Jeep. Obviously, this is some sort of just sort of car. And I love the little claws at the front there. I think that's really, really cool, actually. Uh, you can, he does have his little gun. I love it how it is a little G1 inspired because it does have the extra little missile just on the side there. I think that's pretty cool. Let's put that aside. Um, it's strange looking. He does have these big bits. These are for robot mode and everything like that. Um, but saying that, it's a great little car, if I'm honest. I actually want to get the, the normal set that's out in the shops at the moment because um, I think it just looks great. And I want to keep them in their box. It, but I'll try and get them if they come down in price. Um, saying that, good toy. Let's transform it. Um, what we do first is we just take the bonnet section, rotate it around like that. Um, I've only transformed this once, so bear with me. Uh, just disconnect the arms. They're just tabbed in at the sides on the hips. Rotate them up like that. Separate the legs, rotate them down. Then we need to rotate him 180 at the waist. Uh, flip out his little feet, or his giant feet as it, as it turns out. Put them like that. Uh, then we need to rotate his head out of there, just into position. And then we bring this whole section, it's kind of accordions down. He's got two tabs just in there, just under the claws. But you can't really see it because it's all black and they fit into these tabs just there. So you push them in. And then he's also got two tabs just sort of in there. It's a bit hard to see, really. But they are yeah, going to position themselves, once you've got it in the right one, just in there as well. And it all connects nicely on there. So then, if you strain it all back out, you've got his feet. One second. And then bring his arms down. Uh, this little piece rotates around, filling out that gap in the arm. And I think that is actually probably one of the coolest bits, actually. I love that. Uh, and then these, his little exhaust pipes on his arms. You can actually, where well, it says to rotate them around, but you don't need to because it looks pretty cool with them down. It's like Hot Rod-esque. I'm sorry, I think it's it. Hot Rod-esque little guns. So I'm going to leave this one down. Uh, but that is um, Swindle in road mode. You can put his little gun in his hand. And that is pretty cool. But there he is. Uh, you might notice that my one has silver feet. That's because I painted them up like the back of the box. Um, I just use some water-based paint. It's pretty easy, really, to go. But a couple of coats, no problem at all. And then I just used the back edge of a, like a scalpel and just went round any paint that was on 
over the edges. Um, and that worked out pretty well. I want to try and get some more like neon purple paint and maybe do the wheels or something. I was looking to see if Repro Labels did a set for this guy, but I haven't seen nothing. It's got some great articulation. The head will turn and everything like that. I do like it. I think it's a great figure, actually. Uh, definitely one of the best ones of the bunch. I'm going to put him over there. The next one we're going to come on to, this is Blast Off. And again, he was missing some black paint apps on top of these wings at the top here. But, again, I painted them up. Um, no problems, really. Uh, he does have a Decepticon sign just there on the wing. Um, but I did repro label him up. You can barely see it just in there for in robot mode. But saying that, he's a pretty damn cool looking Cybertronian shuttle. Um, though when you come around to the back, he's looks like an old Cyberjet, really. But, you know, it doesn't look like he's got any thrusters around the back here. They did mould some into the back of his legs. I don't know if you can just see it just there. So when he's in robot mode, it looks like that's where the thrusters have gone. But it would have been nice if they put some actually on in his alt mode. That would have been quite cool. I might paint them up silver to give them a look, but I don't know yet. Uh, right, to transform it, these guns come off first. I love it how they actually included the sort of like extra peg there, because what they're supposed to do, you're not supposed to have them that way. You're supposed to have this one on there, because there is a hole there, and they do kind of match up on one side, but on the other side they don't. Um, I'm not totally sure why, but looking at it now, there is a little peg just there. I don't know if it's going to show to you well. There is a little peg just there, and there is one missing, so maybe when they all match up it, it just pushes out slightly who knows um but saying that it's a pretty cool shuttle i love the purple camo scheme uh to transform it just sort of disconnect the legs slightly they're just all sort of no, maybe not that one that's used later when he turns into bruticus why aren't this coming out i found it what it was it was just sort of really tightly tabbed in it's just a bit of a pain anyway so you untab it and then we just pull the legs straight out like that uh, and then we're almost there. I just got to remember how exactly to do it. Then we split this like that. Then we rotate this all the way around. Move that out slightly because there's some nice little ball joint at the shoulder there. Uh, just rotate them around. I've got to work out which one becomes the front. I think we rotate them that way. This. Uh, we lift up this little portion here. Oh, plenty out. Matt is supposed to come down like that at the back there. That comes all the way down. That just tabs in. At the front, we've got Blast Off's head there. Now then, these little purple sections are supposed to just tab in to this little white section here. It doesn't really always want to go, but you just got to force it in there. Like that. It really doesn't want to go the first time you do it, which can be a pain. Anyway, then we just angle these up on his shoulders grab his hands which are just hanging around in there and pull them out if you can that is there we go and just angle them back up then we put these guns back in his hands and he's got a couple of cool little blasters if you can get them in there is. and then that is blast off um he's got quite a cool little robot mode actually it's not too bad. Um, the arms are a little bit of a bit fiddly, but once you sort them out, I think it's actually pretty damn cool, if you want my opinion. Um, it does remind me of a Cyberjet. Again, I might paint those thrusters up, because they look pretty cool at the back there, and they look like they do need some paint applications, which is a shame, really. That Hasbro is the way it is at the moment, where it's just scrimping on stuff like that. We'll put Blast off over there, uh, and then we'll move on to Vortex. Okay. Now he was um, missing quite a few paint applications. The, the guns he comes with are just all purple, so I painted them up sort of like in a silver type paint, which worked pretty well. And just on these little ski bits, or whatever you want to call them, uh, the edge bit there was um, was just all blue, so I painted that up silver as well, and I think it works really well. It does have working rotors, which is pretty cool. It doesn't have a back rotor. But, if you want my opinion, as a weird Cybertronian helicopter, I think this works amazingly well i think it looks really good actually i love the gun at the front i think that's actually really good um but yeah i mean as as um toys go i mean it doesn't have any landing gear but who the, who the hell needs it eh? uh, we're going to take those off the side it does remind me of that weird transformers prime arachnid really but this is a hell of a lot better um it does have a nice big 
G2 Decepticon in sim a symbol on the side there, the same on that side. Uh, right, so now then, uh, there isn't much more to say about it in this mode. Um, I'm going to transform it, if I can remember how, because I only transform this once. Um, I can't, can't exactly remember how it does tab in slightly. There we go. Sort of disconnect that, separate the legs, rotate these out, forming the rest of the legs, fold that gun away into that half. You can see the robot hand in there, so that's pretty cool. I love it how to form brute because they did, you know, have hide all the parts and all the limbs can become a foot or a arm or whatever, uh, which is pretty cool actually. Just fold them away, that creates the heel spurs. Now this is where it does get slightly confusing as such. Um, you split these in half, rotate them around, fold him 180 at the waist. Uh, this rotates all the way back down into position. Uh, then we just start unfolding things really and then you can't go too far wrong. That's it. Rotate that up and around, close that up. So again, just sort of like start rotating things out. Where does that rotate from there? You go. And then rotate that one around into position and then rotate that one again. Like that, it's position. I think it clicks into place actually. Yeah, it does. There we go, and that clicks into place, holds that straight. Then we've got the robot head just in there. Fold that down, rotate its head around. Can be a bit problematic. Uh, and then we have Vortex in robot mode, and to be honest, I quite like it. Um, the rotors do get in the way a little, um, but what I do is I have him holding a gun in that hand, and it sort of like holds the rotors in one position. Then you can just sort of like do that with it, and it's it's all right in it. Again, I put the other gun. You can have it like he's holding a sword if you want, um, but I don't. I prefer using them as guns. And there he is, that is Vortex. The only problem you're going to get, I mean, he does sort of bend at the knees, um, is the head. Uh, it's got quite a cool head sculpt, but you try and turn it, it hits these two black bits either side. Uh, to turn it, you've got to either lift it up and around like that, and then he's always looking up, which is pretty cool, but, you know. Um, but yeah, but he's all right. Um, not too bad a robot at all, actually. Put him over there. Right, the next one we're going to come to, this is Onslaught. And... He always looks a little underwhelming because obviously he's supposed to be the largest sort of toy of the group being the middle body, but he ends up being a bit smaller than Bloody Swindle, which is a bit strange. But it does sort of work out when he's in combined mode because obviously he stretches out a lot. Um, anyway, this is him. On the toy, oh, sorry, on the back of the box, rather, uh, these parts of the, this gun are all black, but I was going to do it for this one, but in the end, um, I just couldn't be bothered. It seemed like too much hard work. and I might do it. We'll see. Anyway, right, so this onslaught in his uh, armoured vehicle mode, I don't know what you call it, armoured car, armoured truck, I don't know. Um, anyway, it looks okay. These sort of wheels do sort of roll, though they have trouble. Um, back one's fine. Um, it does have a gaping hole in the back there. Um, other than that, there isn't much to say about it, really. So let's just transform this quickly. He's got quite an easy transformation into robot mode, but I've got one big issue with this robot mode, I'll come to that. Oh, pardon me. All right, so we take the gun off, and then we open out these arms, like so, which fold them all the way back. Uh, and then we just open out this, and you can see it rotating just here at the waist, fold that all the way around until it clicks into place. As you can see, there's Brutus's head. Just rotate that downwards. I believe it does have trouble getting out of this fucking just where Onslaught's head is. It is problematic. I had massive trouble with this because when I first got it, it would only ever come up almost this far. And then you see that Onslaught's head is just like hiding behind that chest piece, and it shouldn't be like that. So, what I did, um, I filed down, I can't remember where I filed it now, I think it was off, it's off one of these parts as it comes round. Oh, or I might have used the nail, but anyway, so that allows him now just to fold up all the way, and so you get it into that position. Anyway, so once you get there, and rotate the arms around until they're into that position there, and then just straighten out the oh, bloody hell, look at all the ball joints, so that's not a problem. There we go. But the joints here are incredibly tough. 
and with the plastic they've used it always feels like you're going to snap it so it is a little oh, it's a wanker to be honest i hate it um anyway and then we disconnect this from this piece this then just rotates up at that joint all the way into the back there come back round to the front and then all we've got to do next is just rotate his legs out and around like so and there we have one slot i think this bit is supposed to go up actually yeah it is that rotates up into there and then it will click into there i'm sure it is sure that's what it's supposed to do yeah so it slides around and what i just figured out i had to look at my instructions actually it sort of um just sort of goes around and then there's a double slotty type thing and it just sort of holds in the back there which is pretty cool now this is on slot once you put his arms back down use that so you get the rotation it will go from side to side his head um but that is on slot now i did do the paint apps on his feet now the one big issue i do have with this is the hip joints um they move out okay but you try and move them forward or backwards it looks like it's going to snap because they're so tight i have to hold them at the joint to move it because if you hold it there and do it, it just you can see the pins popping out and everything so i just hold it here and hope for the best um that is my major one issue with this toy which is a shame because it should they should be great but i don't know what's happened with hasbro lately they're just putting out substandard stuff which is a shame i mean why, why do it i mean you know i mean if a little kid got hold of that it's it's obviously going to break at some point it won't hold out forever um maybe that's what they're hoping i, I don't know but <laughs> I don't, I don't get it to be honest i think you know they someone really should say something to him i mean it's just getting a bit beyond a joke now to be honest um because soon people just won't bother buying them i mean believe me i don't actually buy a lot of hasbro products anymore because i just think what they're putting out is a bit bit shit to be honest um, i'm not gonna i'm not gonna spend my money on it i'll only buy, only buy a few bits I'm either buying more third-party stuff at the moment or um, knockoffs just because, well, knockoffs have got their own niche in my collection and um, third-party stuff is just a hell of a lot better, the quality-wise and, um, well, yeah, quality-wise, really. Still, there we go. You know, uh, anyway, right, I'm going to transform these back into alt modes for these four and we'll leave Onslaught into his and then we'll transform them into Bruticus back in one sec right so they're all in their alt modes well apart from onslaught obviously so here we are uh, we're going to start with blast off so again we have to separate his legs which i had a lot of fun with the last time so it's probably an equal amount of fucking jit there we go got that one off it's not there right okay so let's make sure he's still complete uh, right so then we do that into there and then as far as I remember, we now spin them 180. And then as you can see, he has an extra hinge joint. We just rotate them up. Up again. Now, as it should. Oh yeah, you can see there's just a little clip there. That goes in there. And also there's a little thing that just goes in there. And it's going to be in the hands. And he's getting them. Maybe I should have got them out before then. Black little down now you can see with the arm you can see what you've got uh, thumb depending on you want to put them up uh, we just need something to put that out slightly there we go so he's going to be the uh, right arm um, as you can see it, it is very long uh, I will try and do something about that a bit later on and uh, we're going to come to the vortex here uh, he is a little bit more involved, you've got more to do. You separate this. Uh, separate that, put the gun in, rotate his hand out. Now he 
does have a removable thumb sort of hand you want to put him as, but we're going to have him that one. So just those bloody road bikes do get in the way. So we'll close him back up. Rotate him back out. Now you have to start, I think that comes right down to there. This is supposed to rotate around somewhat. Um, exactly what I think it's the kitchen it rotate up. Ever so slightly out of the way. Oh, man, that's going to come around to here. Does that sort of work some of the time? Over there. Right, and then we're going to come to Swindle here. Swindle here has got an easy one. Just rotate this robot feet out. It's going to come to feet. Robot mode, and then we we'll come around to the back here. We've got to try and pick out this little black section, which seems to me to be down stuck in there. We've got to take this apart now. Get out of the way, push it out. Let's just put that back. Leg mode. Uh, yeah, not too bad. Right, I'm going to put him over there, and then we come to Brawl. Brawl has a little bit more work to do. Fold that out, rotate this around. That comes out down to here. This little green bit comes down, and then these two little notches on the gun. Just going to be seeing just there. Oh, it's there. You can sort of just see them. They fall into these little notches in there. Like so, and then as you can see makes a perfect sort of look. Now, I've seen pictures of wood like this, or you can then just take his robot arms, disconnect them slightly, and just move them around into that position. It gives his leg a little better stability. And then he is. Right, and we come to uh, on sort of here. Uh, right, the first thing we're going to do is just get his arms in position, just like that. Uh, rotate this around. Fit. There, there we go. Right, so just sort of right angle them out however you want. It's hands. Uh, do fold away. I can't exactly remember how. One second, let me just look at a picture. That's bad of me, isn't it, eh? Oh, there we go. They tuck away underneath, don't they? That's it. What we do is they tuck away. And, on the, and then you can see he's got these little notches just there. That will grab with the little robot hand just under there, something somehow. Looks a little bit crap to me. Uh, hold on. Yes, because they're tight, the notches are always tight. Right, I'll grab onto them. I'll put them in that sort of mode. Can flip these up if you want, I don't, don't know why. But he does come with these. Then all we've got to do now is attach them to everybody. We're going to do the legs first. And he just attaches into this one. They are quite tight to get in. I remember getting them out when I first got the bloody thing. That was a bit frightening, I can tell you. Anyway, right. So then we come to a little brawl over here. As you can see, he's very tall. Yeah, it's a bit fucking frightening, I tell you. Anyway, let's get him in. Let me just do this off camera. It's a pain in the arse. There we go. All right, so we've got him in. Let me just realign his little feet. Goes in there. All right. Let's 
small. You might just need to do that. There we go. And you'll now need to come round to the back of onslaught. You probably can't see what I'm doing, but there. And just push these legs forward one without breaking them. There it is. Oh, look at that. There he is. Once you've got there, let me just re-angle my camera. Sorry about this, guys. There we are. Now you can sort of see him. Uh, right, so once you've got him into that position, let me just make sure he looks... Yeah, I don't like the way Onslaught's arms hang around there, though, to be honest. And then we've got Vortex. I'm not quite sure if I've got this right, to be honest. Right. Yes, I figured out exactly what I was doing wrong. I forgot that I'm supposed to disconnect that central piece just in there. It's a bit of a nightmare to get out. But then it ends up looking like something like that. Uh, and then all we do is we come up here to the top of Bruticus. And then we try our best. Get that on him there. And then we've got... <laughs> there he is. That looks crap. <laughs> so I just... <laughs> Uh, and Onslaught's hand has come loose again, but we'll come to that. And there we have, right, so then we've got three of them on. We come to Onslaught here, uh, sorry, not Onslaught, Blast off it. And then we put him on, but he has this hand that is so much longer. Now, I did have a look at this the other day uh, when I first got this, and I did have a look at trying to figure out how to give him a slightly better looking hand. I did come up with something, but now for some reason, I can't think of how I did it. Um, one second. Yes, all that. we do yeah. is we just disconnect him slightly there, rotate that down, and then just get his head past that little tiny bit. And then see so we're in that position, and then we just, all right, we've got the robot head poking out a little bit, but then I just sort of turn it that way or something. Um, but then you get a slightly shorter arm, and then we stick him on. Um, there we go. And it does end up it looks a little more in proportion oh, bloody hell. looks a little more in proportion if you ask me um but there is wolf of cybertron or g2 version anyway of bruticus now he, he he actually looks a lot better than when i first got him out of the box if i'm honest i mean you can move him around but he's going to have problems isn't he um but to be honest, if you just leave him on the splat, I think he looks brilliant, actually, if I'm honest. Um, the plastic does feel a little cheap, if I'm honest. Uh, but if we turn him around here, this is my biggest gripe. He's got this giant hole right there. Now, you're supposed to fill it with the gun. And the gun does its job. It does fill the hole uh, pretty much well, if I manage to get it on just right. It goes on to four different tabs. Um, but... It is liable to pop off at any damn time, which is a shame. Anyway, so there, that's, but then when you've got it like this, uh, you're not going to pick it out too well. But it's all the hollow bits on the showing, which is a shame. But you're supposed to use it to create this giant sonic cannon, but you can create a cannon out of the normal guns anyway. I can't remember exactly how this goes now, to be honest. Um, this one goes in there like that uh we're looking for these two go somewhere i think it's probably like that there you go in those holes if i can get them in once you sort of straighten them up like so and then with one of these these probably just go in there like that and so this is the other variation of the gun that you can form, or the one that at least comes in the box anyway. And then he can hold that in his hand. And then he's got a gun. This arm, apart from if I could get rid of the robot head somehow, does look a lot better than the arm um, that is packaged. But that is Fall of Cybertron Bruticus, and to be honest, he looks great. He's actually a little bit bigger than his original G1 counterpart. Um... Yeah, I actually, actually, he's grown on me. Um, when I originally got him out of the box, I wasn't that keen. I wasn't that impressed with him and didn't really like him. But seeing some of the other Wolf Cybertron stuff like Soundwave and not Soundwave so much, but definitely Grimlock. Grimlock was definitely underwhelming, but this guy, actually really good. Um, yeah, if you can get him, I would get him. But 
just be a little careful with some of the joints and don't expect too much of him. But for what you're getting, I think he's all right. He ain't too bad. Um, yeah, I'd say solid 7 out of 10. If it had been made a few years ago, I think it would have been made probably a lot better. You can interchange the arms. Unfortunately, the instructions on my one doesn't, doesn't give a, uh, a transformation for like Swindle or Brawl into the arms and vice versa for them to. Um, I'm wondering that when he does get released for the Wreckers, whether um, maybe the instructions show the has these two as the legs to give him a bit of a different look, maybe. Who knows? Um, but saying that, uh, not bad figure. Could have been a lot better, which is a shame. Uh, anyway, right, this has been Graham, Collect 75. I know this video went on for a bit of a long time, but I shall see you all next time. Bye for now.